Hi, I'm Deborah, part of Cohort 13 of the Data School within the Information Lab. Thank you for tuning in for how to use the window table calculation in Tableau. In this video, we will be using the SuperSource Sales Dataset. I'll start by introducing the window SAM table calculation, how to create it in two different ways, following with how to configure it using the Compute By option and how you can apply this knowledge to other window table calculations. One of the ways to create the window sum calculation is creating a new calculated field, which you can do by clicking on this arrow on the data pane and choosing the option Create Calculated Field. This will open the calculation editor where I would always recommend you having this right hand side gray pane open as this will really help you understand what are the different functions you can find in Tableau. So for example, right now we want to use the window SAM function. So if we search for window underscore SAM, there it is. We can find it and we can read what it is and how to use it. Again, highly recommend you to always have this pane open. First things first, what is a window sum calculation? It is a function that will return the sum, as the name of the calculation explains, within a window. Now, this window can be defined by means of offsets from the current row, which I will show you in a second, but basically you can define a start and end offset, although these are not obligatory, so you can omit them and the entire partition will be used instead. This is the function we want to use. We can simply double click on it and just uh, fill it in as we can read how to do it on the pane on the right. What we need to do is add in a measure. So what is the expression that we want to sum? In this case, we want to sum the sum of sales. So that will be our expression. And that is the obligatory part for this calculation to no longer contain errors. You can just type in sum of sales or what you can also do as I have already have it in the view. I can just drag it by pressing control. And this orange indicator will tell me where it will be dropped. There it is and we no longer have an error. So this calculation is now valid. The last step is never forget changing your name of calculation. We don't want to end up with calculation number 150. I swear you will not remember what that is. And pressing OK. Our calculation has been created and we can add it to the view as it is. So I'm going to drag the calculation we have just created and drop it on the measure values shelf. This is going to create this uh, extra column where we can see that the value is always the same. Now let me just do a bit of formatting. Just going to change it to a currency and to display units as thousands as well just so it is more readable. And you can see the number is always the same. Why is this? Because if I go back to our calculation, we haven't really defined any offset. Therefore, this is calculating the sum of the sum of sales across the whole table. This number is just the sum of the sales for each individual row. Now that we have covered how to build the window sum calculation without any offsets, let's look into the actual offsets. To our previous table where we had the man of order date on rows and then each column with a different measure. So it was sales on one column and then the window sum calculation we created on the second one. What I did was adding the same calculation but with a starting offset instead. So as you can see on the right hand side, it's the same calculation, but I have added this uh, bit, which is telling what should the start offset and the end offset be. In this case, we have the starting at minus one and end zero. So this means 
minus one, it will go into the previous, in this case, previous row. And the end is zero, so it should be the current. And what I hope we can see from this table and this representation is that this is calculating. So for example, for February 2018, the result of the window sum with this offset will be 19K because it is summing the 5K plus 14K. So it is summing the previous row, so minus one with current so zero and therefore it is 19k the same for 60 so it is adding the current sum of sales with the previous so 5k and that will result in 60k now i know 56 plus 5 is uh, 61 but don't forget this is rounding so that's why it is not exactly what you were expecting so i hope this makes sense we have just another example. So the other column, instead of having a offset on the start, we have an offset at the end. So it starts on the current row and we should end in the following row. So in this case, we are summing for February 2018, we are summing the 5K with the 56 because that's the next row. And that's how this offset work. Something to have in mind is that Tableau will really take into account that the first placement is start and the last is the end. So what that means is that if you try to have a higher number at the start, then at the end, you'll have an error. So for example, given that my end is on zero, I can't really ask Tableau to have the start at two. It has to be, before zero, so minus one, minus two, and so on and so on. The same will apply the other way around. So if I say that my start should be at one, I can't say that the end should be at zero because that's before the start and that wouldn't make sense. So just something to have in mind. Now that we know how to just create a new calculated field and use the window sum function, let's learn another way to create it. For the second way, we are just using the quick add uh, table calculation method. The first thing we want to do is add the expression we want to create the window sum on. In this case, it is sum of sales, so I already have it in the view. And the next step will be to choose the option add table calculation. So this is the second option. You can just, after having the expression on the view, you can simply right click, add table calculation, and then you can configure it. So the equivalent calculation, it isn't called a window sum. It is moving calculation. And then you can really, just going to zoom in and then you can really specify what type of uh, calculation you want to do. So we have seen the sum, but you could also do average, minimum and maximum. So this is the equivalent of window average, window minimum and window maximum that we'll see in just a second. But let's focus on what we have just seen. So it should be sum and then this is the offset. We, instead of having to think about what is the start and what is the end, uh, you can just use these options. In this case, in order to mimic the option of giving me the sum of the current and the previous row, uh, we want to do previous value one and no next values, and we want to keep the current value as well. This is the equivalent of the offset we'd start in minus one and at zero. If I exit and I move this onto our measure values shelf, and if I quickly just change the formatting, so it is also on currency and we have the display units of K if it's thousands. And there we go. We can see that for March, 2018, the result is 60k, 
because it will be the 55k plus four and a half k it's exactly the same as uh, the calculation that we have seen previously the last step is understanding how to compute by functions when you have a table calculation in your view it will have this triangle to represent it is a table calculation and when you have a table calculation what you can do is right click or even just clicking on the pill and choosing the option edit table calculation this is going to open the table calculation configuration window where you can define how these calculations should be computed. By default, it would be table down, basically just doing it across the whole table as we, as we have seen in the previous examples. But if instead you select the option of specific dimensions, you can be more specific about how this moving calculation should be calculated. Now I'm not going to cover all these options. I will just quickly show you what I hope to be an easier way to understand what this is actually doing. What I believe helps understanding this window is kind of translating it into English. The way to read it would be for each antiqued field, compute the calculation type by all the ticked fields. So in this case, where we have ticked segment, but unticked month of order date, what we are actually telling Tableau to do is, for each month of order date, compute the moving sum of previous to current by segment. And what difference does it make? Instead of just going row by row, and uh, I believe one really good example would be on these 3K. If we didn't have this option, the 3K would simply be 3 plus 6 because it would just go row by row in the table. But because we said for each month of order date, it will restart. The 3K is actually 3K rather than the 3 plus 6. And then it continues. On corporate February 2018, it is 4K, so 1 plus 3. Now, these may not make as much sense, but it was just to really understand what is going on with all these options. Now, we have the other option, which would be and ticking segment and ticking month of order date. So in this case, what we are asking Tableau to do is for each segment, compute the moving sum by month of order date. As you can see, the results are computed really differently. For example, for this 10K, it is not calculating just the current value. It is not calculating three plus six, it is calculating three plus seven. Why? Because it is going into each segment. So in this case, it's like you just had a table with all the consumer rows and then it is just going, okay, this is the second row. So I can get the value from the current row, which is three plus the previous one, which is 7K. I hope this makes sense. If you need, just pause the video and try to read it over and over again. Last part of this video is how you can just apply all these that you have just watched onto all the other window calculations. I'm going to search by window. There are all these different types of window calculations. So the theory is the same. The only difference is the calculation that is being done. While on window underscore SEM, we are performing a SEM on, for example, window average, we are performing an average. So rather than summing the values, we are averaging them. And the same logic will apply 
So all this learning you have just done, you can just use it on all these other calculations. Thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Check out our newest upload and related videos that you can click on the screen.